Hello, my beautiful kings and queens, and welcome or welcome back to Tea with Nasha. Now, today I have a new, fun, and exciting video for you. Today, you are going to get me playing with me in my wellness, gratitude, and journaling planner. This is a planner that I purchased from Poshmark. Um, with an extension pack and outdated inserts because I want to utilize what I have instead of purchasing new items. So this planner does have these beautiful rose gold discs. Unfortunately, they are plastic. I would love some metal ones. I prefer the metal ones, but those are a coin and your girl is trying to save her coins, not spend her coins. This cover is very beautiful. It is very watercolor theme i love the quote here it says kindness is contagious and i would like to welcome lilith to the video my beautiful succulent my faux succulent here so lilith say hi to youtube youtube say hi to lilith okay so we are going to get started so we're going to open this and flip to the month of june Now, June already has his journaling prompts set up and ready. I do use the journaling prompts from Plan With The Lease here on YouTube. They are free. I love the fact that the journaling prompts are universal. What I mean by that, that there are some you can put out on YouTube and on your Instagram or whatever social media platform you use. And there are some that are more personable that you may not want to share with the internet. For example, one of the journaling prompts that I feel as though is universal is this one right here where it says a book that has impacted me is, that is something very universal that I feel like you may be comfortable putting out on social media or something that you may not necessarily wanna put out there is this journaling prompt here that says what is causing me stress right now. So that one could be a little bit more personable depending on what you may or may not be going through at that moment. So what you're going to get today is a decorative spread we are going to decorate together. So this spread here was for the week of June 6th. Um, it was supposed to be for the wellness and journaling, but unfortunately I confused myself and put my social media info in here. I don't know why, I don't know how, but unfortunately I did. This spread is a challenge that I am doing with planning with Caprice on Instagram. So this theme was home is for the house plants. So because I didn't have any house plant stickers, I just doodled in some house plants myself and used some colorful boxes and some washi dot stickers from Avant Agenda. And then this coming week, I'm sorry, so this week was for the first week of June. So like the ending of May, beginning of June. This spread here is Sweet Treats and this is for the week of June 6th for that challenge. The challenge was Sweet Treats. So I will be filling this in with the appropriate information this time. Um, I just know how to fill it in now because I am filming this on June 7th, which is the second day of this challenge. But I knew I wanted to film the setup, so I didn't want to put any information in here just in case I chose a prompt that was more personable that I didn't want to share on camera. And so the next week we are going to decorate together. The theme for this week is, I believe it was Shine Bright or Fun in the Sun. I literally just looked it up guys and I cannot remember it that fast. That is sad. Let me see if I can look this up really fast. Okay. So, Let's see. Sorry, my computer's 
having technical difficulties. Okay, so this spread is for the week of June 13th through June 19th, and it is fun in the sun. So she says, bring all of those beach party vibes to your planners this week. Pool parties totally count too. Okay, so I don't necessarily think I have any summary type stickers in my sticker books that I currently have but I do have some yellow stickers in several of these books so that is what we are going to work with today so for the first time ever on Tea with Nature, even though I've only have a few videos out you are going to see me utilizing more than two sticker books so the sticker books we are going to use today maybe maybe not is the happy gold sticker books because I know there is some yellow stickers in here some actual yellow and not like that mustard yellow we're going to use the wrong wrong sticker book the colorful boxes sticker book the happy hour sticker book which has been completely destashed and the pastel tropic sticker book so these are the five sticker books that I will be utilizing today. All right, so we are going to get started. So we're going to move Lilith up here. You can still see her. I'm going to take these two pages out of the book. And this is an undated planner. I'm not sure if I told you. But I will show you what the back of the planner looks like later on. Okay. So let's get started. So what I may do is get started with the Pastel Tropic sticker book. That is what I'm going to get started with first. And I think I chose this book, not for any yellow per se. Because I think I might have used up the yellow in this book. This is the first time I actually looked through the books to see what I wanted. I believe that I've used up the yellow in this book, which I did. I chose this for, I know where the stickers are, I'm just double checking to see if I used up all the yellow. Okay, yep I did. But I just saw one that said chase the sun, would it be weird to add this? Chase the sun. I don't know, but I like it. Okay, so we're gonna stick to one sheet at a time. Okay. Chase the sun. I like that. Now I'm gonna try to bring you guys down some more. And I'm going to move Lilith so you can be able to see. So this one says Chase the Sun. I do like the name of it. I'm not sure about the pink. The pink is pretty. I'm going to see if I can try to bring in some of that pink. And then what I'm going to do next is take these palm trees. And just stick them on here randomly. So we have one. So there are five palm trees. I wish there were six. We could have made that an even number. 
but it's okay. I'm gonna stick those baby ones down here. So I hope you guys are having a great start of your week. Can you believe it? June is almost over. Like I feel like we just started June. Let's not put that down there. Just puffering up. Okay. But as I was saying, I feel like we just started the month of June. And it went by so fast. But what I wanted to do today is talk to you guys about self-care and why self-care is important and necessary as people. And self-care is not just important for adults or people who work in the helping profession. Self-care is important for everybody because if we can't help ourselves, how, excuse me, let me tear out a page from my planner. If we can't help ourselves, how are we going to help other people? Like, does that make sense? And I think some people don't practice self-care because they feel as though they don't necessarily deserve it. And some people view self-care as selfish. But when did caring about ourselves become selfish. You know what I mean? Like when did that become a bad thing? Okay, this one says chase the sun as well. So I know that's a brighter hue than the other pink, but I'm going to use it just because it says chase the sun. And I think that is it. I may or may not use this yellow one here, but I'm not sure. But yes, as I was saying, self care is very, very important. We are using the Happy Hour sticker book. Okay. Um, so we're going to take talk about what self-care is and what self-care isn't. So... Sorry. So, back to what I was saying. Self-care is choosing peace. Choosing your peace. That is what self-care is. And peace can be defined as whatever gives you peace. Whatever brings you peace. We cannot define peace for you. And we also cannot really define what self-care is for you either. What I know to be true is self-care is choosing your peace. Because if, 
you're not at peace. People can feel that. People can feel when you're not at your best, when you're not happy. And if something is disrupting your peace, let it go. Peace is free. And if you don't have peace, what's the point? Peace is free. So if you are involved in something that's not bringing you peace or joy, let it go. Okay? Because there is no point of being involved in something that is bringing you grief. So self-care is also taking a step back. It is okay to take a step back from things that you would necessarily be involved in. But when you are feeling burnt out and fatigued or experiencing compassion fatigue, then take a step back. It is okay. You know how the writer's name is throwing me off right now. Actually, I have the book. Okay. Shonda Rhimes, where she had the book called The Year of Yes. I went through this phase where I had the year of no. And y'all may think I'm joking, but no. I literally had the year of no. People would invite me places or ask me to be involved in things or anything like that. And I would be like, no. And they're like, huh? No. It is okay to say no. Because you have to take time for yourself. And I think that's why burnout and compassion fatigue, the numbers of people who are burnt out has risen is because people were so afraid to say no. And it's like, you're allowed to say that. It's okay. Yes, I'm giving you permission. No one's ever given you permission. On this day, whatever day this is uploading, Sometime in June, Tea with Nature is giving you permission to say no. It is okay. Take a step back. And that's, you can take a step back from work if you have the leave. Take a step back from family. Take a step back from church. Whatever you are involved in to where you feel so you are being burnt out and pushed above and beyond your means take a step back be like no i'm gonna take two weeks off and it's okay self-care is also putting you first we need to start putting ourselves first and that's it's okay we have the right to do that because if we are not putting ourselves first then who is putting us first? Does that make sense? If we are not putting ourselves first, then who is putting us first? We can't help other people if we cannot help ourselves. And we already have too many people out here trying to help other people when they are in shambles themselves. I don't want help from people that's in shambles. I don't know about y'all, but I don't. Self-care is also setting boundaries. Knowing what you will and will not tolerate. Knowing what you will and will not do. So especially if one of your friends, okay, say for instance, you just got back from out of town and somebody wants to hang out with you and you're like, I just got back in town. I don't really, I don't really feel like it. I don't really know. And they're like, come on. You can do it. You always da 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 da. Setting boundaries with them. Like, hey, I said no the first time. That is my final answer. Don't feel like you, you're obligated to hang out with that person because they're begging you. You said no the first time, so if they didn't want to listen, set those boundaries. Hey. I said no the first time and keep it moving. 
don't feel bad because they should have listened to you the first time. So you had to set those boundaries. And that is okay. We should all have boundaries. When we stop having boundaries, that's when people think they can walk all over us when we don't have boundaries. So boundary setting is necessary. And boundary setting doesn't have to be just for adults. Like I said, it can be for children as well. Children need to know that they can set boundaries. Especially when it comes to self-care. Because children get overwhelmed and, eased and frustrated just as easily as adults do. So self-care is also loving oneself. To love yourself is also a form of self-care. Because we don't love ourselves. I know I keep sounding like I'm repeating the same thing, but I'm not. But if we don't love ourselves, who's going to love us? And that doesn't mean you're conceited. We're supposed to love ourselves. And if we don't love ourselves, how are we supposed to love other people? If you don't love yourself, I don't see how you can possibly love other people because you don't know how to love if you can't even love yourself first. So self-care is loving yourself. Self-care is also very calming. Self-care should be relaxing. And self-care should also be a priority doesn't have to be number one but it should be a priority especially if you have family you don't want to be burnt out when it comes to your family and your household you want to give them 100 percent. you want to give them your all you can't give them your all if you're burnt out and you're fatigued and you're stressed and you're overload because you weren't practicing self-care. Self-care is also forgiving yourself. Yep, self-care is also forgiving yourself. Okay, I know this is starting to look very boxy, but... I want to utilize these beautiful stickers. And self-care is also making sure you are kind to yourself. A lot of us are very hard on ourselves. And I think because the world is just genuinely hard on us. So we tend to be hard on ourselves first. But we have to make sure that we are being kind to ourselves. It's okay to have expectations. And we can place expectations on ourselves. But make sure our expectations aren't too high. That when we don't meet those expectations. We're placing self-doubt or talking down on ourselves. I call it negative self-talk. I don't like negative self-talk, never did, never will, especially in children. Oh, negative self-talk in kids make me cringe because I feel like it's a learned behavior. So if they hear someone talking down to them, then of course they're going to start talking down to themselves because that's all you hear. So now we're going to talk about what self care. So we talked about what self care is. Now what we're going to do is talk about what self care is not. So 
Self-care is not a luxury. Self-care is not a myth. It's not a made-up word. It's not a made-up entity, something we just do just to do. Self-care is very important because you can be so stressed and overwhelmed and fatigued with life that it can cause you to have a breakdown and you do not want to go through that experience. Okay? Self-care is not time consuming. You have time in your day to set time to decide for you. So it is not time to see. If you feel like you don't have time, if you live with someone, if you have a family, talk to them about making time for your self-care. That's what family's for. That's what the support system is for. Self-care is also not a one-time treat. It is not an indulgence. Self-care is something you're going to have to practice and do over and over and over again. Especially, <clears throat> excuse me, especially if this is your first time practicing self-care. Because it is a practice. If you've never practiced self-care before, it's going to take you a while to get accustomed to it. So, that's not a one-time treat. You're going to constantly have to practice self-care. Self-care is also not a sign of weakness. Self-care is actually a sign of strength because you're practicing self-care. Honey, that means you care about thyself because you're practicing self-care. You're putting time to the side for you. So self-care is definitely not a sign of weakness. Self-care is not one size fits all. And what I mean by that is the way I practice self-care is not going to be the same way you may practice self-care. We all are going to practice self-care differently. And self-care is not the same as self-control. Okay, two different words, two different entities. They are not one and the same. So, so if for those of you who practice self-care, what do you do? What are some things that you do to practice self-care? And if you don't practice self-care, what is stopping you from practicing self-care? Is there something stopping you? Or you just don't know what to really do? So I think the first few topics that I would do, or suggestions, I should say, for those of you who do not practice self-care would be to go ahead and set boundaries boundary setting will be my first choice for those of you who do not practice self-care is to go ahead and set those boundaries 
my second choice for those of you who do not already practice self-care would be to take a step back. So take a step back would be my second choice for those of you who do not already practice self-care. Uh, self and then my third choice would be to be kind to yourself. That would be my third. So boundary setting, taking a step back and being kind to yourself would be my choices for you for those if you do not practice self-care. Alrighty, so I want to try and find I'm trying to find a sticker to cover up craft beers to try. Sorry, I'm just browsing through. I like the sticker, it says defining happy. So what I'm going to try to do is take this chase the sun out. Actually, no. Because do match the yellow in here. So we're going to put that back. So this is a great sticker book. Sometimes I just wish, like I love the clear background, but then sometimes I need a white background for moments when I'm trying to cover up something. Oops, you're going to... So for those of you who are working, how does your current profession view self-care? Is it a priority? And if they don't view self-care as a priority, are you able to still practice self-care yourself? Like, do you advocate for yourself when you need a break? Do you still advocate for yourself? I know there's some more yellow stickers in one of these books. Okay, let's get 
one of these. Can that fit? I'm just going to angle it like that and then I'm going to go back into this book because I did see a quote that I want to use. So in the comments, I want you to tell me your thoughts on self-care. And we can have a discussion about it in the comments section. I hope you guys learned something today from me. And I would love to learn something from you. Okay, here it is. So I'm going to use this Well and Happy sticker. I'm going to actually no, nope, we can leave that. Alright. So this is my spread. I hope you guys liked it. Just a recap. I did use all five books. So we use the wrong Ron sticker book. Happy Gold sticker book, the Colorful Boxes sticker book, the Happy Hour sticker book, and the Pastel Tropic sticker book. So, hope you like the bright colors. I love it. It also goes with the theme, Fun in the Sun, for this upcoming week. And before I leave you off, I would like to leave you off with this quote. Self-care is how you take your power back. Self-care is how you take your power back. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this decorate plan with me for my wellness and journaling and gratitude planner. This was very fun to do with you all. It's very bright, pretty. It was also great talking about self-care with you all as well. Again, don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. And Tea with Nature will catch you in the next video. Bye.